Hello everyone, this is Pastor Miguel from the Children's Bethelius Ministry Church here in Maryland. Today I want to talk to you about protecting yourself from demons, okay? So, I'm sure this stuff hasn't been taught in your church, but if it has, that's good. Praise the Lord for that, because unfortunately a lot of churches don't teach what I'm about to teach you today. And it has to do with protecting yourself from demons, okay? Protecting not only yourself, but also your family. So, when you first become a Christian, this is the time where most people feel like they're being attacked by the enemy. So you're thrown into this war and you don't know exactly what to do. So I'm going to help you today um, on how to protect yourself and obviously your family. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how to demon proof your life so that the enemy doesn't have an open door into your into your into your life. So first of all, let me say that this is this is war and it's, there's going to be confrontation. Confrontation means that uh, you must understand that you're in a battle and this is war and that, you know, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to fight, okay? So, I'm going to teach you some of the things you could do in order to defeat the enemy, obviously, and uh, because Satan is persistent. He's going he's gonna, to, he's not going to stop attacking you. As soon as you make a choice for Jesus Christ... All these things are going to happen, and you're going to say, what happened? Why are these things happening? And this is not to scare you, because obviously, as a Christian, God has given you a power and authority over these things so that you can fight back and defeat them. And so, uh, you know, you could have a very good life if you, if you, if you um, protect yourself, if you follow God, and you do the right thing. So I'm going to teach you little by little some of the things you need to do, okay? So the first thing you need to do is you, you must have a prayer life. And I just made a, a, a short YouTube video talking about, you know, having a prayer life. And prayer life is very important because that's how you communicate. Uh, and, um, you know, you talk to God and you have a relationship with God in addition to reading the Word of God. So there's there's supplication prayer and there's obviously deliverance prayers. And I'll tell you what, war, we call it warfare prayers. And warfare prayers... Uh, prayers in which you are offensive against the enemy, obviously defensive. You know, you put on the armor of God according to Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 20. And so, you know, you have to be off offensive. Say, uh, you know, Satan, I command you to come out of my finances. Don't touch my finances in my name of Jesus Christ. I protect my family with the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan, get your, your paws off my family. Just prayers like that. Commanding, you know, God has given you authority over these things so you could command. So, a warfare uh, pray, prayer is a commanding prayer. You command it in the name of Jesus, okay? Not in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's the difference between what we call prayers of supplication. Supplication will be, Lord, please let this happen. Uh, command, uh, prayers of warfare will be, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, stop doing that. That's the kind of prayer. So there's a difference in prayer. There's regular prayer, Lord, help us, you know, um, uh, that our finances are better. And, and then there's deliverance prayers, which... God has given you the authority to do. Satan, get your hands off my finances, just to give you an example, okay? So Jesus commands us to cast out demons. And so we tell people when they first become Christians, you know, more than likely, you brought in demons with you, right? So you need to receive deliverance so that you could be totally free from these demons that are living inside of you. And we call them, we call them, um, um, you know, they have no legal right to be there. So they're like, they're like, um, People, you know, people that have moved into a building and, you know, they're just living there because nobody has told them to leave, that type of thing. So they have to be told to leave. When you become a Christian, some of them leave, but not all of them. If you have a strong man, if you have a really strong spirit, which you don't know until you go through the living's ministry, uh, you won't know if, if you have them or not, okay? Okay, the next thing is you have to understand your authority. And how to exercise your authority. If you don't know you have authority over these things, they're going to run over you, right? This is the problem with churches nowadays, right? They don't tell people that they have authority over these things. So they tell people Christians can't have demons. We know that's not true. We know that's a lie from Satan. And probably your pastor needs deliverance if they're thinking that way, okay? So we do have authority over these things. Jesus Christ has given us authority. Mark 16, 17 and Luke 10, 19, right? Gives us authority over the demonic forces, okay? So, you must make sure that you understand that you have authority over these things and they can't touch you, right? But you have to you have to pray against it. You have to command it in the name of Jesus, okay? 
So the next thing is you need to practice deliverance. You need to practice uh, deliverance not only on yourself, but make sure that you're constantly practicing deliverance on your family to make sure uh, prayers of uh, protection for your family, for yourself. Because if you don't do that, it's like a warrior, right, that uh, doesn't train. A warrior that doesn't train is a weak warrior. And so, um, you know, this is why the the knights, when they, had, um, when they were not fighting, they will have medieval games. And the reason why they have med medieval games is because they want to make sure that they remain sharp uh, doing war. So, you know, if you, if you don't practice constantly, if you don't practice praying to God for, to protect you, your family, when you spot the enemy doing something to your health, your finances, your family, and you don't do anything, then the, the enemy is just going to run over you, okay? So, you know, it's going to, it's going to, um, demons are very disciplined. So even if you don't pray, they're going to attack you. They, they have a military type of structure, structure with commanders and they take orders and follow them with precisely. They are afraid of the uh, superior commander and there's punishment and torment if they're not following those commands. So demons are motivated by fear and intimidation. And so, you know, you have to make sure that you're also, um, you know, practicing uh, protection, protecting yourself, uh, right, in the spirit so that the enemy cannot in any way destroy, steal, and kill, okay? So how do you protect yourself? Well, the first thing you need to do, obviously, I told you prayer, right? The second thing you probably need to do is not be a winner, not a whiner. And what that means is stop being so negative about everything. Negativity, negativity brings negative things into your life. If you're positive, positive things will come into your life. Because you, the Bible says you reap what you sow. So if you're constantly re reaping, um, sowing, I'm sorry, sowing negative things, the, the harvest is going to be negativity. So, and so, you know, demons feed off the negativity. So make sure that you remain positive, okay? So you have a destiny that God has given you. And obviously, you know, the, the Lord uh, gave you your destiny before he created you. And I'm doing that, and you know, I'm telling you as simple as possible because I don't know how much you know who's, you know, the person who's watching this. But, you know, you are, you are, you were created and the, and the Lord determined your destiny. The enemy, the enemy wants to prevent you from fulfilling your destiny, right? So you were created to fulfill the destiny God, God gave you, uh, God created for you, okay? But, you know, the enemy wants to make sure that you don't follow God's plan, so you must make sure that you fulfill your destiny. So, you know, you need to pray that you can fulfill your destiny and say, you know, prayers like, I will fulfill my destiny that God has for me. And a lot of people are what we call in the curse of Jonah because God has called them into ministry or God has called them into doing certain things and they're not doing it. And as a result, you know, their whole life is chaotic, right? Because that's what the enemy wants you to, to do, okay? So what stands in between uh, us fulfilling our destiny? Obviously, Satan. You know, how we see yourself. You, you need to understand your identity, who you are in Jesus Christ. You are in Jesus, and there, therefore you're a son of God. And because you're a son of God, then what happens is, um, you know, you're an adopted son of, of God. So you got to make sure that you understand that you're not, um, you know, what the devil wants you to, to, to think of yourself, a loser, uh, a no good uh, you know, that type of thing, because that's what he tries, that's what he tries to, to make you feel like, okay? The other one is, don't be lazy and don't be, um, don't procrastinate, because those are things that prevent you from completing the goal God has set for you, okay? Don't be fearful, that's a big one, don't be fearful of taking the assignment given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't worry too much. Don't worry too much. Worry is the same thing as uh, being fearful, right? You know, as a matter of fact, God says in the Bible that, that cowards will not enter the kingdom of, God, of heaven. So you got to be sure you understand that God is with you, that you are uh, an adopted son of God. And because you're an adopted son of God, God protects you. God protects you. And you have authority over these things. And that uh, you have the ability to speak and to, to command things to stop in your family. And so... Be positive, okay? Don't think of the glass half empty. Think of the glass half full, okay? So, 
you know, one one of the other things we see a lot is um, people start complaining about God when when things don't go their way. You have to trust God even when you pray and things don't happen because God has a purpose for what's happening in your life. So if you're a son of God or a daughter of God, God has a purpose for you, right? And when things go don't go your way, right, and you prayed about it, right, you have to by faith believe that God has a better answer for you. So you have to wait for the Lord to answer that, okay? So, you know, the devil, what he tries to do is to place these negative thoughts in your head. And, you know, and sometimes you believe it, you believe these negative thoughts, and the negative thoughts become part of you. And that's, that's what we call, um, you know, false belief systems. And these false belief systems become what we call strongholds. So I want to tell you, you know, Jesus opens his arms to you. If you are repentant and you ask him for forgiveness, he's faithful to forgive you. But the enemy will always tell you, there's no hope for you. You know, you're not, you're not going to go to heaven. You're not going to go to heaven. Uh, you're going to uh, go to hell. And so, you know, the devil will make you feel guilty and he will condemn you and will tell you, God's not going to forgive you. But that's not true. If you're repentant, repentant means that you're willing to turn away from whatever sin or whatever you did and you ask God to forgive you, he is uh, faithful to forgive you, okay? So when the devil lies to you, you have to be able to break that, that lie. And the way you do it is through the Word of God. So you look for scriptures that tell you truth and those scriptures will actually break that stronghold, okay? And um, so that that's an, an important thing to understand. To understand that, you know, Satan, Satan might claim, you know, might, might claim certain things against you, but the, most of them are, obviously most of them are lies and they're, they're meant to um, break you down. So some of the common strongholds are fear, anger, rejection, depression, self-hatred, and abuse. Okay, so these are as what we call strong false belief systems that people have developed. And so fear, obviously, you know, you know, if you're fearful about everything and you, you don't trust God because the opposite of fear is faith. So if you have faith in God, you shouldn't fear anything. The only fear a Christian should have is the fear of God. And that is the fear to offend God by committing sin, right? Get, you know, you don't want God to be upset at you because you're, you're living a, a sinful lifestyle or you're committing some kind of sin. Um, rejection, thinking that everybody doesn't like you and you're being rejected. Depression, feeling, oh, poor me, poor me. Self-hatred, meaning, you know, I'm no good, right? Remember the identity of who you are in Christ Jesus. And obviously, uh, another one is abuse, right? Abuse. So that's another one. So sometimes, um, you don't know, you have strongholds uh, into somebody speaks the word to you and tells you, you know, you are always thinking negative you're a negative person and you need to change you need to change it this is what the word says about your your false belief systems about things so i call people on the phone and there's i said to them at the end of their conversation i said you have not said anything positive to me not one thing that has been positive all right and so you as a, a as a Christian should know and recognize these things when people are being negative. Anything that's negative is not of God. Anything that's negative is not of God. So when the enemy comes against you and tells you, you know, you're no good, uh, you know, you're not gonna go anywhere, you're a loser. Why are you even trying? This this is stuff from the enemy, right? This is stuff from the enemy. But you as a warrior, you have to follow your commander. And so the commander, you know, tells you that you have to fight back. Resist the devil and he will flee. You know, as a word of God, you're not afraid of Satan. Satan should be afraid of, of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. So when you command these things to stop their attack, right, you're not doing it in your name. You know, you're doing it in the name of Jesus Christ, right? So the power is in the name of Jesus. So you got to command these things. Show them no fear. Show that God is with you, that you have faith that God is with you. And so you have authority when you say, you know, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. So when David faced Goliath, he wasn't worried about offending Goliath or about Goliath's feeling. He knew there was, uh, that Goliath was there to kill him. But David knew that God was behind him. So he showed no fear. This is a trait of a true warrior. 
Okay, a true warrior is not fearful, right? Because especially when we know that we have the Lord Jesus Christ to back us up, okay? And so tactics of the enemy, what the enemy will try to do, lie to you, intimidate you, give you self-doubt, give you self-condemnation, thinking, t telling you that God does not uh, back you up. Um, you know, the devil sometimes tells you, um, you have no power, right? And he's, he's right. You have no power. Jesus Christ gives you that power. You have the authority. So you are, you're working on behalf of Jesus, right? He's, he's the most, um, you know, the, our Lord Jesus Christ. So the devil tell you, there's no, you have no power. There's no help for you. Nobody's coming to help you. God's not here. Some of the things he tells you, okay? You can't believe that stuff. You have to stand on the word of God. God says he'll never leave you or forsake you. He'll be with you wherever you go, right? Joshua 1.9. Joshua 1 9. So you got to stand on the truth of God and not believe the lies of the devil. All right. So the warrior's strength and courage comes from God and knowing that God keeps his promises. It doesn't matter who the, uh, the enemy is. He could tell you, I'm huge and, you know, you can't fight me. I'm a principality or whatever. God is greater. Okay. Defeat. If you get defeated, if you fail in something, just keep in mind that. Uh, the defeat is only temporary. You got to fight back. You got to keep resisting. We understand that the battle has been won already. Jesus Christ won the battle and has given you authority over these things. So if you fail, if you sin, right, and you're trying to fight and you're resisting the devil and you fail more than once, get up again. Get up and fight, okay? So eventually you will win because the battle has been won already, okay? But you got to do your part. So... How do you train? How do you train? Well, you train by keeping in mind that the Bible is what we call a training manual. The Bible tells you how to overcome evil, right? Jesus gives us um, and I, you know, tells us exactly how to defeat the enemy. He gives us examples of how to do that. One third of the Bible is casting out demons. And then, you know, he was tempted for 40 days. And on the 40 days, he used scripture against the enemy. And that's the same thing you have to do. Um... Every day we're provided with plenty of opportunity to pray and to train, okay? So we could train we could pray for people in our family, friends, right? We could also obviously read the word of God as we should. Uh you could read books on deliverance. I would recommend that you read books on deliverance. Um you could practice with, you know, you could ask a, an experienced deliverance minister if you could sit in their ministry and see what they do so you could learn some of the prayers that they use and how to fight the enemy when the enemy comes against them. Uh, you could attend seminars and you could attend classes. There's deliverance ministry seminars, um, you know, that you could attend. And, the, you know, some of them are very good. And so you could attend, okay? Make sure the best defense is anticipating the enemy's tactics right through the sermon. So you could identify an enemy's attack because they, they always, there's always clues there's always little things here and there that, that tell you that the enemy is going to attack you, okay? So obviously, God will warn you. You have to have a prayer life in order to identify these things. You have to be spiritual. You cannot identify these things in the natural, okay? A warrior, you know, what? what is a warrior? A warrior is focused, is never focused on fear. Uh, they have absolute uh, supreme confidence in who God is and what he can do. Right. So don't give the enemy too much power. Don't give him too much credit, okay? He's not that powerful. God is the creator of everything. So just imagine that. Uh, you know, God, you know, you get a Lego, and the Lego, you put it together, that's the enemy, right? You created whatever, a house or car or with Legos, right? So you could smash it in any minute. So God could do the same thing, okay? So don't be fearful. Trust God. Know that God is in control. Um, the, the warrior is right with God. you right. And so that means you overcome sin and you're going to sin. Okay. But when you do sin, ask God to forgive you. He will. Okay. You're going to have to, um, you know, overcome strongholds, false belief systems that you have developed. You need to break generational curses. Okay. And other hitting time bombs that you may not know. So ask the Holy Spirit to reveal anything that needs to, um, be broken. Okay. A warrior understands how to fight in the battlefield. Uh, we must be adaptable to the enemy. The enemy has different tactics. 
Sometimes he may use your family, sometimes against you. Sometimes he will use people in your in your ministry. Sometimes he'll talk to you and tell you lies. So you need to identify these things from the enemy so that you can fight back. Okay. So your 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 goal as a Christian is to destroy the kingdom of Satan. So that's the the Bible tells us that Jesus came in the flesh to destroy the works of Satan. Okay. So you need to glorify God and you need to tell other people about Jesus Christ so we could overtake the kingdom, take, take the kingdom of Satan, um, you know, to, uh, grow the kingdom of God. And so you're going to have to preach the word of God to other people. And some people are not going to hear it. That's fine. Right. You're going to have to um, pray for people for deliverance. Right. So we could take back the territory that was given to Satan um, at the fall. So that's what God has commanded us to do, to go out there and to preach the gospel and to heal the sick and to cast out demons and raise the dead. That's what Jesus commanded us to do that. So always keep that in mind. Everything you do is for the kingdom of God, to glorify God, okay? You know, as a warrior, you have to understand losing is not an option. You have to keep fighting. Um, you know, the, the battle of the, uh, the outcome of the battle was decided on the cross. Satan thought he was winning, but his head was crushed. He was destroyed. And so we expect victory in every fight against the enemy. So uh, I want you to keep in mind, okay? I just told you all these things. You as a warrior need to constantly train and be disciplined. If, you're not, if you don't train or discipline, discipline means reading the word of God, praying, right? The enemy will overtake you because the enemy does not rest. You go to sleep, but the enemy does not sleep. The enemy does not eat, does not eat. You eat, you take the time for your lunch, You take your time for dinner. Uh, you take your time for sleeping. You, you take your time to watch TV. Guess what? The enemy, that's not what he's thinking. Why? Because he's he's afraid to be punished. He's afraid to be punished by his superiors. And so he's always training. But you, and by the way, they you know they've been there for thousands and thousands of years. If not, who knows how long, right? So you, as a, as a Christian, need to understand. You need to have wisdom. You need to ask for God to give you knowledge, right? And then once you get that knowledge, you practice, right? And that becomes wisdom. So, you know, you got to constantly read the word of God. You got to constantly pray. You got to read books on deliverance. You have to train, right? And I don't mean, you know, obviously you have to spend time with your family. But if you do these things I just told you, you'll be fine. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. And God bless you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.